Peace and blessings and welcome back to Bodybuilding for Brass Players. I am Umbu Kelly Juice Cat Jones and today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about uh, a practice routine. I'm going to give you a routine that you can practice at home, uh, especially when you say to yourself, I don't know what to practice. So today is all about what to practice when you don't know what to practice. Uh, and I might do a little series on this, a few different videos of the same sort of topic. Uh, give me a second, I'm going to pull up a PDF that I'm going to be uh, that I will uh, include a link. So I'll include a link to a PDF that you can download free of charge that will have everything I'm talking to talking to you about. It will be broken down for trombone, tuba, uh, trombone and euphonium, honestly. Uh, trombone, euphonium, tuba, uh, French horn, or uh, trumpet. Okay, so the things I'm going to be talking to you about in this video are, uh, first off, I'm going to give you an overview for this routine. And we're going to start off with uh, with octaves, just plain old octaves. Uh, after that, we're going to do some major scales with a vocal sort of uh, technique that I learned when I was at Central State University. Um, after that, we're going to do all the major scales in all seven modes. Or not all the major scales, but we're going to talk about doing major scales in all seven modes. Uh, we're going to do dominant, diminished, seventh uh, chords. Is that right? Oh. Now, actually, what we're going to do first, we're going to do whole tone scales. I'm going to give you whole tone scales and explain what those are in case you don't know what those are. And then I'm going to show you something you can do with dominant seven chords, uh, arpeggios, where we can go through a whole tone sort of pattern. And then lastly, we're going to wrap up with some diminished seventh arpeggios. So I'm going to do all this on the trombone. Like I said, it will, it will apply to any instrument. Uh, I'm trying to squeeze this video into about 15 to 20 minutes maximum. So um, I have not played at all today. I'm giving you uh, an idea of what it will sound like for me, at least first thing in the morning uh, when I haven't played anything. It's going to be a little rough. And as we go through this, we're going to gradually get a little warmed up, sounding better and sounding better. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to start with octaves just on the concert B flat. See how rough that sounds? Now, um, I'm going to design this for the B flat tuba. If you play a C tuba, of course, take everything up a whole step. Um, but I'm going to put this in, in B flat for our, for every instrument. Same thing with the C trumpet. If you're playing, you're doing this on C trumpet, then you take everything up a whole step. Um, anyway. Except for maybe, maybe the first note. If they sound really bad, then I might go ahead and tongue a couple notes. But if you have an instrument such as a trombone or a four valve or five valve tuba or euphonium uh, with four, four valves or compensating valves or a four valve trumpet, you keep on going down. <laughs> Actually, this is March 21st, so we are in the uh, middle of the, or the end. This is Saturday of the first week of being completely locked down at home. Um, and so uh, my practicing hasn't been what I need it to be and what I will make it be. You know, I've been establishing a routine, uh, but it hasn't been a practice routine yet, so we're going to get there. Uh, but I'm actually glad to show you that with you, share that with you because, you know, you can hear my, my octaves are sounding bad. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and work on those. Now, another level of the octaves is you can go, you know, continue up with the octaves, going from here. You know, and then 
Yeah, or you can just do three octaves at once. <laughs> But um, like I said, it's first first notes of the day, and I haven't been playing much, so I gotta get back into in decent shape. So you can go. My point is that you can do this multiple ways. The first thing I love to do, and a lot of times when I'm picking up the horn for the first time, is just do octaves. Um, octaves will tell you where you are, okay, at the beginning of the day. They'll let you know. They'll let you know how prepared you are for the rest of the day of playing. And right now, obviously, I'm not well prepared at all. So the next exercise I'm going to show you is a vocal uh, exercise that um, I learned when I was at Central State University. Um, and um, I'm just going to give it to you. Basically, we're doing a major scale, but we're focusing on the descent. So we're going to start on the root of the scale, go up an octave, and then we're going to go, we're going to go, do, do, ti, do, re. So we're going to go down to the seventh, back to the, back to the octave, and then up to the, the ninth or the re and then work our way down the scale. I'll give you an example. sound uh, but that's what I would do though or what I'm doing and you know just to sh show you reality here if it's that rough and I have the ability to go to the keyboard I'm gonna go ahead to the keyboard uh, if you're you know if you're able to get to a practice room great if you need to use your phone um, to pull out a P P piano app on the phone and just go through that on the mouthpiece because if I'm not ready on the mouthpiece I'm not ready 
let me go ahead and do break it down a little bit more. I'm gonna do it without the mouthpiece. Um, let me see. Let's go up to D. <laughs> Free buzzing. Some people don't like free buzzing. I like free buzzing. The more prepared I am before I even touch the mouthpiece, the better I'm gonna sound on the mouthpiece. Now, when you actually get to the mouthpiece, you're not free buzzing into the mouthpiece. You're just keeping the lips touching and blowing and letting the vibration occur by, because of the back pressure. But but at the same time, if you can free buzz, you're you're stimulating you're simulating the similar a very similar vibra vibra vibration vibration a very similar vibration, and that's what we're talking about. Everything here is about about vibrating. The instrument vibrating the, the embouchure keeping the air flowing and then moving to the right position with the proper fingering so that you can get a good sound through the instrument let's go back on that <laughs> exercise ascending chromatically or going down chromatically or going through the perfect the uh the circle of fourths um, okay and you can hear hopefully right there i'm already sounding way better than i was at the beginning so perhaps that's what i should have done in the first place was just start with some free buzzing some free buzzing and then uh, then playing on the mouthpiece and then playing on the instrument. But that's what I would do uh, and what I do. So you can do that through the extreme range of the instrument. You don't really need to, uh, but you can. Uh, it'll help. Nothing wrong with doing it. Um, with that exercise, it's all about lyricism. It's about getting a very round sound. That's about the, That's what the whole thing is about. The nice round. Let me see. So if I'm not getting a round sound, I've got to make sure I round out that sound. And then, and then I might go back to my octaves for a minute. missing a step. I haven't, I haven't added the major modes to this PDF. <laughs> I have to finish this PDF stuff. Uh, the next step is to play major scales in all seven modes. So to take it right back from B flat, um, in case you're not familiar with the modes. Um, so I'll play B flat major. <laughs> By starting B flat major on the C, I'm playing in the second mode. So it's B flat major starting the second scale degree. Then starting on the D. Part. <laughs> 
really focusing on it going up well, coming back down lyrically, beautifully, you know, with some kind of color and sound warmth to it. Another way you can do it is to just um, use this pattern right here. And I'm going to go all the way up until I get to um, the B flat. So I fast forward. thing is the whole tone scale. Um, now, the whole tone scale, first off, I'm, I'm still evaluating how I like this stuff. This is the ultra pure trombone slide stuff. Um, I like it. Oh, there it goes. That's not bad. This horn is so, the compression on this horn and the inner and outer slide is so tight that all I need is a little bit of something. And if I have too much, just a little too much, it just gums it all up. Uh, anyway, um, Next thing is the whole tone scales. So the whole tone scales, if you're not familiar with whole tone scales, um, every note is a whole step apart. So with a keyboard, it would be you'd start with um, let's start with E in second, go from E to F sharp to G sharp to B flat or A sharp, C D E, and back down. And so every note's a whole step apart. There's no there are no half steps in the whole tone scale. There's truly only two half uh, two whole tone scales. There's the one chromatic chrom let me slow down. There's one chromatic scale with all twelve diatonic or chromatic pitches. I'm sorry, chromatic pitches. Um, there are only two whole tone scales. So basically, the chromatic scale is split into two, and the whole tone scales don't share any common notes. So the six notes that are on one whole tone scale are not in another whole tone scale. The other one starts a half step up or half step below. So I'll put all this in the PDF that you'll see. Um, I'm going to start the first whole tone scale on E. Basically, I'm going to start in the normal range of the instrument. Um, I'm not going to go. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not going to go into the um, into the trigger register too much with this exercise right now, uh, but you can feel free to do that. Uh, so starting here on the E. <laughs> show you going through the entire range of the instrument. This is going to be a little fuzzy here, <laughs> probably, but let's go for it. Thank you. 
got the whole range of instruments, but that's from the pedal range up to a high E. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna take the whole thing up a half step. extreme low to the extreme high so you shouldn't feel tension here even go to those those high-pitched notes you really want to hear the note as long as you're hearing it well your body's gonna gonna um, produce the pitch and if you don't get way up way up to the high E or the high F cool just go up as high as you can without any significant changes and then work your way back down you should make small changes you know I'm not gonna say you have one embouchure for everything because truly you're gonna make adjustments here, you know, with the tension a little bit, tension here a little bit, slight adjustments, but you don't want any giant overlap of lips doing weird things if you can avoid it. Now, if you happen to happen to have a, a very challenging setup here, basically, you gotta do what you gotta do. But you wanna avoid as much, uh, as many giant changes as possible. So anyways, at the end of that, you really should just feel good. You might feel some tension, some activation, uh, uh, you know, some lactic acid a little bit, but you really wanna just feel good at the end of that, like a nice big stretch. Um, okay, the next part of this routine, let me see how we're doing on time. Oh, I'm in much further than I planned on. I'm trying to make this 15, 20 minutes, I'm in 23 minutes. Uh, anyways, try to make this, uh, keep going here though. The next part of it is you take that whole tone concept and you apply it to your dominant seventh chords. So dominant seventh chords, you can't see the piano, I wanna show you my whole mess, but um, if you don't know what dominant seven chords are, Dominant seven chord is a major seven chord with a lowered seventh. So your B flat major, dominant seven would be B flat, D, F, and then A flat. That A flat is flat in the tongue instead of an A natural, which is found in the key signature. It's actually a flat found in the key of E flat major. Your dominant seventh chord is your fifth uh, chord of your major key. So it's B flat dominant seven actually comes from E flat major. If you're not familiar with that, stop, hold off. Go do a little research on what dominant seven chords are because I want to keep kind of going with this flow of this. I don't really want to go too deep into that. But it'll, they'll all be in the PDF, though. All these dominant seven chords are in there. Um, there's my dog, Joe, scratching his door. Um, so um, if he scratches again, I'll let him in. If not, then I'll keep moving. Uh, so what you're going to do with these dominant seven chords, I'm going to start with B flat again. Why not? Uh, and I'm going to go up a dominant seven chord. Ah, that's not good. And I'm going to end on that A flat. Guess what? I'm not done though. I'm going to build my next dominant seventh chord off of that A flat. Excuse me. I'm going to build the next dominant seventh chord off of that G flat or F sharp, however you want to think of it. Now I'm at a high E, the same high E I was at with the whole tone scale. Um, now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, there are two ways you can do this. I can just go down a half step and start the whole process over again. Mm, that's kind of rough. Um, or I can go from that high note where I landed and go and do the whole thing again. Let me, let me show you. So, the, so one way you can do it is just go by half step, down half step, down half step, down half step or up half step if you want to also, that's fine. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start over and go, I'm gonna take the top note and then start over at the bottom. So the first one I did was, ah. that E, and I took that E and I'll start at the bottom with that E. So I went and built one off of E, Build one off of D. Build one off of C. That's not right. Gotta hear that. You want that? What happened?
happens with Dominant Seven Chords is they voice leading. Never mind. We'll leave that one alone. But um, you'll need to hear that seventh. So by doing that, I've actually accomplished, I've, I've spelled out three Dominant Seven Chords. There are 12 Dominant Seven Chords. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, 12 Dominant Seven Chords. Um, with this exercise, I'm getting half of them in the first set. So the first set in this case is B flat, A flat, then G flat, uh, then yeah, yeah. So the the first set is B flat, A flat, and G flat. Okay. The second set is E, D, and C. Okay. So if you want to put the whole thing together, you could go way down low and work it up way high, kind of. Um, now the next thing you do is you do the same thing up a half step, starting on or down a half step. I'm gonna do it up a half step, starting on B. show you this on the keyboard but I'd have to move some significant things around to do that but my point is that you are in this process of doing it like this you're you're, you're spelling out all of these 12 dominant seven chords within two sets of this exercise it'll all be on the PDF um, after the dominant sevens you do something kind of similar but really different with your uh, diminished uh, diminished seven chords with a diminished seventh chord, everything is a half, everything is equidistant. It's, it's a minor third away. So um, you do the same thing. So a diminished seventh starting on E is uh, E, G, B flat, and then D flat. So if you take that with, with the uh, diminished chords, there's really only three different fully diminished seventh chords. Uh, I'll start the same thing. Starting on B flat, we have. Okay, B flat, D flat, E, and G, and then landing on a B flat. Go down a half step. C. That, so, landing on a half step, you're going from A to C to E flat to F sharp or G flat, and then down to A flat. That was rough. So, that's A flat, B natural. D and an F. And guess what? Now I'm going to be on G. But what I already played the one with G because the B flat fully diminished is the same notes, has the same notes as G fully diminished, G diminished seventh. So if you take the combination of, a, of an E, a G, a B flat, and a D flat, Wherever you start, if you just keep going up and down the whole range of the instrument, you're just spelling out fully diminished seventh chords. It'll be in the PDF. The next one, uh, like I said, I just started on, on A, but that one, if you start on F sharp, it's the same notes. Uh, you can keep going up and up the instrument and just exploring that sound. The same thing starting on A flat. Uh, A flat or F or D or B are the same one. Not that high. I don't know why I'm thinking it's higher than it is. Anyway, um, in my mind I'm thinking it's high. That's what's keeping me from getting a good sound on it. The point is, we're just exploring these diminished seventh chords, okay? So uh, that's the last step of this routine. It's taken about 30 minutes to explain. Um, <laughs> I was gonna go 15 minutes, man. Um, so it's about 30 minutes, you know. Uh, once you get into this and you really, really explore it, this is a good hour 
routine, hour and a half routine. You know, you can split it into halves. Don't practice for more than about 50 minutes straight because if you do, you can start to cause yourself some physical damage in your joints. Take a break after about 45, 50 minutes, you know, uh, or 30 minutes. Take five minutes off, come back. Anyway, the point is, this is a full routine. You know, if you're sitting at home saying, I need to practice over break. I don't have any, any music to practice. What am I going to do? Scale, 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 scale. Any band director will tell you, scale, 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 scales. But even just without, you know, without just going into your scales, doing them in all the modes, doing your octaves, learning about the dominant sevenths and exploring those. You can do major seven scales, or chords, rather. Major seven arpeggios. That's our hump. suggestion uh please like the video and subscribe to the channel pdf will be in a link below the uh, video and until next time